Hana here, and this is PBS Reno STEM Works, the show where we explore careers in science, technology, engineering, and math, and find out what makes them so much fun. We'll take you inside some innovative businesses, talk to professionals, and explore what it is that they do. Today, we're going to visit the Sierra Nevada Corporation to find out what they do. PBS Reno STEM Works is brought to you in part by the Desert Research Institute. We all have our favorite games and toys. For some of you, these toys might be soft and cuddly, while for others, it might be your smartphone or latest gadget. Well, how about a robot as a toy? You probably don't have one of those in your toy chest, but wouldn't it be cool if you did? Since you can't just buy one from the store, you'd probably have to build one if you wanted your own. But you might wonder, hey, how would I go about building something as complicated as a robot? Well, you're in luck. Today, we're going to visit the Sierra Nevada Corporation that does exactly that, build robots. SNC, located in Sparks, Nevada, is a super innovative company that makes all kinds of cool technologies, including these cute robots. You know, they even built some parts that are on NASA's Perseverance Mars rover. Isn't that awesome? We'll get to chat with engineering intern Alyssa Shavalithamrong, systems engineer Andy Smith, and Terry Higler, a software engineer who codes programs that they use on military helicopters. I can't wait to explore all that they do at SNC. And who knows, maybe we'll find out how you can get involved building your own robot. So come on, let's go discover together. All right, here we go. Let's dive right in and find out more. So tell us, what is your job here at SNC? So basically, as an intern, my primary job is to just learn. <laughs> so a lot of my job is trying to figure out how we can use robots to kind of benefit people who would want to be able to use it in different applications they might fit into, and then try to help develop those technologies. A lot of the work that I'm doing is a lot of rapid prototyping. So I do a lot of 3D printing work, and that requires wiring and a lot of CAD modeling. I work with software that's used on helicopters or navigation systems. If you can imagine a pilot flying into an environment where they can't see very much, and you start having the helicopter kicking up dust and those types of things. A lot of times when a helicopter crashes, it's because they lose track of their horizon, and a lot of times they get just a little off and their, their helicopter propeller will hit the ground. Even though when he looks out the window, it might be entirely dust and he can't see anything, through the visualization that we're providing by fusing all of those different sensors together, similar to how we're doing it on the robot, you can actually see perfectly clear everything that's in front of you and around you. It uses various sensors, radar and LIDAR, among other things, to put together an image for the pilot, um, almost like a video game screen. So you're not going to run into any obstacles, you're not going to hit anything, and the pilot can land safely in virtually any environment if they're flying. So Alyssa and Andy, can you tell us how you build robots here at SNC? I do a lot of the modeling of the entire system so that these electronics and mechanical components can fit together in this robot in a way that looks good and is super solid. You gotta have some way to move the robot around, be it propellers or wheels or motors and how to plan, pass through the environment, and react to changes in its environment. We have two visible light cameras, which are kind of used to help identify things in the environment. And then we also have a thermal camera in there, because as we all know, if you go into a dark environment, especially in a search and rescue scenario where it might not have reliable power, you can't depend on it being well lit. So in that case, having the IR camera as a backup is a big help. So there is a LiDAR and a thermal camera on that robot, and we're using these cameras and devices to kind of detect obstacles. So if the robot senses an obstacle, it's going to change its course away from it. And you got to have some way to hold all the stuff inside it, so it's got to have some type of frame that's strong enough to go through the environment, like if you're operating a subterranean environment or responding to a natural emergency. So if it's going into a, like a super dusty area or an area that's going to be seeing a lot of rain, I need to make sure that these boxes are going to be dustproof or rainproof or waterproof. All of these factors need to be implemented into our design. So the mechanical side of it is pretty complex to make sure the robot's actually able to perform in all these different environments we want to go into and still be able to handle all the data that we're bringing into it. Wow, wish my phone had a camera like that. But wait, how do you control the robot? So in order to get a code to mechanically move a robot, that's 
a very specific subset of programming. A portion of it has to do with controlling the robot. We approach this problem very similarly to how you would do it if you were doing exploration. If you find yourself in a spot you've never been before, you look around the room you're in, and you look, where haven't I been yet? And you just kind of go look over there. You have this robot that's navigating through its environment and it has these sensors that allow it to know where it is and what's around it. Robots that can see? That's way cool. How can we learn more about coding and programming? Programming for robotics is a different challenge every day and everything is gonna require a different skill set. And there are just so many resources, not only online, but the people that I work with have all of these resources that I could kind of look to and ask about, and it's been super helpful for me to learn as an intern. There are so many resources out there. There's clubs, reach out to your teachers, reach out to your parents. A lot of people like me, I love to mentor kids, so I know a lot of adults would be interested in helping out kids. There are a lot of like these college courses that are published for free online, like these entry-level college courses that have been really useful for me. There's a lot of different programs that help you when you've misspelled something or when you've forgotten a certain thing. It's almost like having a partner there with you. What do you love most about your job? So I didn't realize how much fun it would be. And it's so much fun. I feel like I'm playing games during the day sometimes. I get to work with robots. <laughs> Um, it's a lot of fun. I get to work with good people. I work on a lot of exciting programs. I love working with the people that I do. They're incredibly smart and knowledgeable and it's, it's fun to learn from new people, and from people that know more than I do. That's one thing that's been outstanding about SNC is we branch out into so many different areas that one day we're working with these gigantic helicopters. Sometimes it's robots on the ground, sometimes it's robots in the air. I really love my job, doing stuff that's new and something that I've never really done before. And I've done like electrical work and I've done computer science work. And it's because I found that traditional mechanical engineering for me personally like just isn't enough. <laughs> like I wanna do more. I genuinely love my job. And if you are similar to me and you like robots and you like engineering, you like problem solving, and you like doing all these creative skills where you need to solve a bunch of problems and bring all these skills together to create a solution, then I would highly recommend going after a job like mine. One of the main things I like about my job is it's constantly changing. I feel like it keeps me excited about what I'm doing. I'm always learning something new. I've done work at SNC that I've never done before. The work that I've been doing in robotics is something that I've never imagined myself doing before. Like I did a lot of welding in high school, so to be thinking that I'm doing a lot of computer programming now is completely different. What are some of the most important skills in your job? Being confident in what you're doing and being confident in yourself was very important in becoming a mechanical engineer. These engineering soft skills are really critical to develop those interpersonal relationships and be able to communicate things important. Being interested in why things work and the little bitty parts of everything, not just the big picture, and to never give up. Having that perseverance to keep trying, just keep trying until you can figure it out. I think what people don't realize in engineering is it's art, right, and being creative. Because the reason why engineers kind of exist now is to improve on how things have been done before. And in order to do that, you have to be creative. How can we get started in building our own robot? Coding is actually one of those things that you can learn a lot on your own. There are a lot of resources online. I started being interested in robotics by like watching YouTube videos and being like, wow, I want to do that. If there's a club that's available to you, join the club. Lots of things out there to teach you how to jump into these programs and projects and start exploring them. Starting out with small things like a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino, those are super cheap to get, and kind of finding that pipeline of like how to get started on like a small scale. What other advice do you have? I, I think that's really one of the biggest things is understanding you're not made of glass, the world's not made of glass, you can go out and try something that seems bigger than you are. Try taking a class on engineering or robotics or whatever might be interesting to you because I don't think you would really, you don't really know until you take that first class if you're going to like it or not. Just having the confidence to start and understand you're going to fail, especially at the start. You're going to fail a lot and that's fine. Not being afraid of doing new challenges and taking on new projects that you may have never done before. So the biggest thing I would say is find whatever your passion is, whatever excites you, 
and really go towards that because that's where you're going to be really successful. I think it's really important that there should be more girls and more women in engineering because I think women are very powerful <laughs> and they need and I think there needs to be more representation of women, especially women of color in engineering. I think a lot of people are scared of it because they think it's hard. They think it's going to be, you know, they're not going to be smart enough or they're not going to understand and, and it's, that's not true. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. Yeah, you, everyone can do it. Engineering is for everyone. There's so many women in this industry and we're really successful at it. It's just like a, a different lens to look through things and everyone's life experiences are gonna bring a different set of things to the table. Well, I don't know about you, but I thought that was super exciting. Thanks to Alyssa, Andy, and Terry, we found out how they program and build robots and what it would take for you to get involved in building your own robots. You can find out more about SNC at their website, sncorp.com. And as always, for more information on this career and others, visit pbsreno.org slash stemworks. Don't forget to get out there and discover what it is that gets you going and on the right path to your STEM future. PBS Reno STEMWorks is brought to you in part by the Desert Research Institute.